my name is Robinson and just to give a little a little bit of background about myself where I started where I am now at the moment and where I hope to be uh, in the nearer future um, from a an educational perspective I started off as an engineer I did computer systems engineering where I majored in both software and hardware engineering and I know a lot of people think that it has to do with IT but I don't see it more as IT than I see it as OT so it's more operational technology than information technology so my first job that I landed was as a PLC network engineer where I was in charge of designing PLC networks uh, managing PLC networks, upgrading them, maintaining them. And then I transitioned over into ICS SCADA, where I was managing a, a SCADA network, uh, writing some scripts for Modbus protocols, that sort of thing. And that's where the five initial five years of my career was spent. And then over time, I trans transitioned into information technology. And my first step into information technology was in networking. So I started off with a networking certification body called Cisco. I started from the associate level and I went all the way up to a CCIE level. Although when I got into Cisco, I wasn't really getting into Cisco with a focus in security. I was really passionate about networks. I wanted to understand network, uh, networks better and how they worked. And then I got a job as a network engineer. Obviously, I was configuring network switches, network routers, configuring some uh, wide area network technologies like MPL, MPLS networks. And then that is where my interest into cybersecurity actually sparked because I started seeing a lot of unauthorized access on the network. I started seeing a lot of um, denial of service attacks. And then I got to sit down and think to myself, how does that all happen? So obviously we do have a group of people, a close-knit society called attackers. So then I sat down and asked myself, what is it that they know that I don't? How is it that they can penetrate into this network and how can I stop uh, their unauthorized access uh, from those people? And then that's where I started doing a little bit of research on what skills you need to have in order to be a cybersecurity uh, professional, as in protecting networks both internally and externally. Now, there is a good friend of mine that recommended EC Council as a great certification body to certify with if I wanted to break into cybersecurity. Uh, the entry level course was CND, which is Certified Network uh, Defense Course. And I sat through that course and it was a very challenging course. It wasn't easy to say the least. And then over time after passing it, I went over to take the CEH, which wasn't easy, but because I already took the CND, which transitions nicely into CEH, it wasn't as bad as CND was. And um, as my career grew in cybersecurity, I went on to uh, take other certifications within EC Council, CHFI, which is for Forensic Investigations. And about a month ago, I attempted the CPENT, which is a very gruesome exam offered by EC Council. That is the Certified Penetration Testing Professional. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make it on the first shot, but I'm very hopeful that um, after I have really prepared for it, I'll be able to make it on the second shot. So that, those are my career aspirations. I want to get to a level where I really, and I can really say that I do understand all the domains of uh, cybersecurity. I know that uh, it sounds like something that's never going to happen since everything changes. I mean, cybersecurity is an ever-changing field. What I know today might not be applicable tomorrow, but that is at least the level that I want to get to. I do CND and I do uh, CHFI as well. I'm currently preparing to clear the CISA certification so I'd be allowed 
to be able to deliver it from my current EC Council accredited training center. So those are the courses that I train. I use, back then in the day, I used to train Microsoft courses, but then I have tr uh, transitioned almost full time into cybersecurity. So that's where my focus is at the moment. After having attempted or rather set or rather studied for the CND, I was very, very uh, amazed by it. Uh, the level of detail that they go into um, the structure, the flow of the, the course itself, the amount of labs that they have. And then I thought to myself, well, the best way to really understand something is to, to teach it, to code a few people in the cyberspace. So if you learn something with a goal in mind to teach it to someone else, you tend to learn it in much more greater detail than if you were to learn it for the sake of understanding it yourself. So I made sure that I became a subject matter expert in all the domains and all the objectives that are covered within CND. And just to give back, I thought, why not deliver the course to other people, especially those that are trying to break into cybersecurity. I mean, CND is an entry level course within the EC Council uh, certification spectrum. So if you can really teach it in such a way that someone gets excited about it, then that's how they can get to go on and take other higher higher level certifications. It's easy to teach a higher level course because you are teaching it to someone that already knows what cybersecurity is about. But to teach a low level course in such a way that someone really gets interested in it, for me, that's very fulfilling. And that's why I decided to teach uh, CND. Over time, I went on to teach other higher level courses, but CND is where I started from within EC Council. Even now, it's, it's very challenging because if you look at CND, it's delivered over a space of five days. It's a, it's a course that runs over a five day period. But then you go and look at the amount of work that has to be covered within that five day period. That is quite a lot. You've got 20 modules, both very extensive, uh, rather all very extensive modules. And to add on to the workload, there's almost a lab for each and every module. So my challenge, or rather my experience teaching CND is that you have to use your time very effectively, right? You have to plan your breaks very effectively and you have to be able to explain certain concepts in such a way that you don't leave a lot of information out, but then again, you don't over explain uh, something because every minute counts uh, within CND. So that is my, my first experience. The second one is that people that set the CND course either come from a different career path. I've had accountants that were sitting the course. I've had HR people. I've had people that previously worked as receptionists that are trying to break into cybersecurity. So my experience was that you have a class in front of you with different people from different walks of life and you have to deliver the course in such a way that it's on the level of each and every one of them without boring the other. So it's a, it's a very challenging experience, but I love it nonetheless because it forces you to think uh, every week when you have to teach a course, you have to look into the background of the people that you are going to be teaching and you know, structure your class in such a way that you can be able to speak directly to their needs. And that has been my experience uh, with teaching CND. I didn't get the opportunity to actually sit in front of the instructor to hold my hand and guide me through it. So I enrolled uh, for a self-paced uh, class within the iClass and then I got the study material. Now eventually when I got the study material, I realized that there's a lot of work that I, I had to go through. So my experience with studying for the course was that you need to have a lot of discipline. Right? You need to schedule a time in your day where you just completely focus on at least learning a chunk of the work. Right? Um, you have to be able to have good note keeping skills. You, you have to be able to work fast while still understanding what you are doing. So in addition to the theory part, there's also the lab part. 
right? Where the lab enforce what you learn from a theoretical perspective. And then again, that by itself again requires that you understand what the lab is trying to teach you. All the labs within CND are scenario based. So um, my experience was that you had to understand the scenario first before you can go through the steps in achieving or completing that lab. Now, when it came to taking the exam, um, I found that even though the exam is aligned with the, the study material, there are a lot of questions in there that forces you to draw your knowledge from the experience uh, that you have as a cybersecurity professional. So even though CND is an entry level course, the exam is not as easy as you might think. All right. So that was my experience with it. And uh, the most difficult part of the exam that I experienced, um, this is the process that I go through when I actually set certification exams. I go through the exam objectives and I make sure that I covered each and every objective within the, uh, the aligned objectives of that certification. So I went through the EC Council's exam objectives, I went through the lab, I went through the book at least two or three times, I can't remember. I spent almost two months just preparing for the CND certification. And remember, I come from a very strong networking background, but still I had to be able to comprehend all the information uh, that was covered within the CND course. So the challenging part in the exam is that uh, you, get, you get a certain amount of time to complete a certain set of questions. So again, you need to be able to work diligently, work, work fast, use the time um, very efficiently. Uh, do not spend a lot of time uh, trying to understand or answer a question. You can just flag it, move forward, and come back to it uh, later on. It sounds like it's a lot of time, uh, three hours, but you really, really, really need every minute within the exam. And that was the, the challenge for me in the exam. If you go and compare it with other network certification bodies, I'm not going to mention any names, but then if you go and sit a network course, the primary focus is an understanding of what a network is, how to configure a network in such a way that it functions perfectly. So there's very little emphasis on security in many of the networking courses. Now, if we compare those courses with CND, CND does sort of introduce you to the concept of what networking is, and then they go in depth in trying to get you to understand how to protect each and every layer of a network, right? That is the number one thing that I like. Number two, I like that the course is very hands-on, right? 50% of what you're going to learn in CND will be done from a lab perspective. So we spend 50% of the time covering the theory and the other 50% is uh, done through hands-on lab practices. That's the number two thing that I like. And the third thing that I like is that they, they cover all the aspects of network security, preventative uh, uh, detection, uh, they cover retro, retrospective approaches as well. Those are all the three elements of network security and they are covered very well uh, within the CND course. And the other thing that I like is that they no long, not only talk about technical related uh, aspects of security, there's also the administrative part of it where they teach you about network policy, how to structure a policy, what, e what, what elements uh, should a good policy have. Right, so that is, those are the things that I like about the CND course. The other thing is that th the way the course is written, you can see and you can feel as you go through the material that it was put together by, you know, industry experts, subject matter experts, people that really know uh, their onions, they know what they're doing, uh, and they know how to share that information as well, because it's one thing to know and understand something but to share it in such a way that the next person understands it is a totally different thing now the way cnd is put together is in such a way that no matter what level of experience you come in at you'll be able to comprehend easily the material that is taught within the course 
that's just one thing I liked, uh, I wanted to add. It gave me a better understanding of what, secu what network security means. I also come from a network design background, all right? Um, and when you look at the network design courses, what they show you is where to put which network device, where you put a router, where you put a proxy, where do you put a file, where do you put a network load balancer. But then when you look into the CND, it teaches you how to design a network with security in mind, not only with usability in mind. So that being said, after taking the CND course, I was able to make recommendations, you know, professional recommendations on how the networks can be designed with security in mind, right? How to make networks modular in such a way that you can add certain elements into a network or remove certain elements into a network without compromising the overall security of the network. And that's the one major benefit that I got after certifying through the CND course. If you really want to break into cybersecurity, then you need to go for a certification that will give you both an understanding of a network and how to secure a network because there's no way that you can secure something if you don't understand how it works. Now, other programs only focus on the understanding of what a network is, whereas CND focuses both on the understanding of what a network is, what weaknesses may lie within a network, and how to cover those weaknesses, how to better protect networks. So CND is the single uh, most course that actually pays very, very great detail into security not only what a network is, but how you can incorporate security within a network. There are other courses that cover security, but on a very high level. Now, the whole of CND is all about securing a network. So they do focus heavily on network security, which I think would be beneficial if you are really trying to get into uh, network security. They preach the concept of protecting your network in all its layers, right? If I may give an example, let's just say you have the, the, the whole idea behind protecting a network is obviously to protect the data that is on the network, which is the, the, the priced resource on the network. But then the data does not you know, run in a vacuum. It has to be stored somewhere. So then you look, you look into protecting the storage that the data is sitting on. And then you go and look at the machine that the storage that's storing your data is connected to. And then you have to worry about protecting that machine that's housing the storage for your data. And then you look at that machine, it's connected to other machines on the network. And then they go and teach you how to protect a network. And then the network has to be configured within a site. And then they go and teach you site security. Right? I was amazed when uh, I came across a section that talks about the different types of cameras that you need to have. They talk about physical security, boom gates, tent styles, things like that, electrical fencing. So there's a lot that goes into CND. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure it's not going to be uh, all shared within this uh, interview, but there is a lot that goes into it. What I would suggest you do is find a good ATC, Accredited Training Center, book your course, uh, have the instructor hold your hand, especially if you are new in the, in the IT space, have someone who's going to stand behind you, try and translate the concept, the most difficult concepts, into something that you would understand. And for those of you that are trying to do a self-study, I'd say go through each and every module within the CND course uh, at least twice, all right? Make sure that you understand each and every little element uh, of the module. Once you have done that, go on to the practical aspect of CND, which is the labs. Go through the labs at least two or three times. As you go through the labs, make sure that you understand all the scenarios that they take you through. When you run a tool, make sure that you understand what the tool is. When you run a command, make sure that you understand what the command does, right? Uh, if the command has different options, do a research on those options. Understand what the different command options uh, actually do. And then lastly, go onto the EC Council website, download their blueprint for the exam objectives and just go through each and every exam objective. Make sure that you are comfortable with the exam objectives that are covered, with, uh, covered within EC uh, Council's CND course. And then you, 
I, I believe at that point you should be comfortable enough to book uh, a date for the exam and hopefully you pass it the first time and even if you, you don't, you don't give up, uh, there's always a second shot.